Glory to God. Somebody help me to understand I'm in my rest. I needed to say it again like you meant say I am in my rest. Open your Bibles to Psalms chapter 23. Psalms chapter 23. Your guess is as good as mine. Psalms chapter 23. Glory to God. Mm. You know how God says to you, I want to speak to my people through Psalms 23. Number one, you say, God, but I know the scripture. Number two, you say to God, but I preached from there many times. And the Lord said to me, tell my people Psalms 23. People of God, what then can be the purest definition of rest than what you find in Psalms 23? People of God, we will read from verse 1 all the way to verse 6, which is the last verse. Like a mass choir at the count of three. Can we read together? One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. <laughs> he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our Father, we ask that you do what only you can do this morning. Write again on the tables of our heart. Eternal words that speak about the rest you have given your people. That the enemy do not, will not take advantage of us. Let a lover of the Lord thunder a louder. Amen. Please help me lift up your right hand and declare after me say I love the word of God. Say it is the compass for my living. Say I love the word of God. Is the strength of my heart. Say I love the word of God. It births the reality that I seek. Say I love the word of God. Say that as I speak the world is recreated. Say as I speak it meets and melts every mountain. If you love the Lord like I do, thunder it louder. Amen. Amen. You know how we do it before you take your seat. Please go round your circle. Just people around your circle. Give them a high ten. Tell them congratulations. Congra congratulations, neighbor. Congratulations. I, I, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. If you set that frowning, I discount it. I better find neighbors who are truly and really congratulating you. Because it's going to happen bigger than they imagine. It's going to happen in a way they never thought about it. Congratulations. 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 If you believe in this congratulation, lift up your voice and give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Uh, and people of God, the Lord wants to let us know what rest really looks like. And like I said, when I look at Psalm 23, nothing truly captures what it means for a believer to be in a rest situation than the revelation of David about the Lord being my shepherd. Where do I begin from? Where do I end? But let me attempt to start from somewhere. Please, it's important that you get this. Help me look at your neighbor again. Touch your neighbor by the shoulder and tell your neighbor do you know you are in your rest uh, tell your neighbor don't worry about that thing again tell your neighbor the Lord is talking to you through me now say don't worry about that thing again tell your neighbor God has fixed it if it sounded like your word your amen will be louder than it is right now So, I, 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 and Ma, I, I, I'm sure you know, you know the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Every time you read the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, the first thing that comes to your mind is nothing missing, nothing broke. Uh, I, I shall not want, the Lord is my shepherd. And so, people of God, if we go back historically, people of God, you are correct. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I, and the truth is that he brings pasture. What makes him the shepherd is his ability to provide pasture. Am I communicating? But important as well people of 
God. Let us date back to the typical pastoralist, especially in the Bible times. How do they provide pasture for their people? How do they provide pasture for the sheep, people of God? Listen to what it is not. Unlike what we have, especially around us right now, what usually happens is that if you are rearing a, sh a sheep or you're rearing goats and all that, you usually would go to the bush and cut pasture, right? Cut the goat uh, food or be the sheep food. Is that, is that not correct? And then you bring it to the sheep den as it were. But on the alternative, it was not exactly the situation in the Bible time. In fact, you will fully understand what it actually means when you think about these Nama people and then um, um, you understand what I'm saying? You know, and all of that. So they do not actually gather any pasture anywhere for the sheep. Do you understand? But the sheep will find pasture as the shepherd leads. So, we have made it about the pasture while it's actually about the leading. So, there's going to be a lot of sheep who will lose connection with the shepherd and still be praying about pasture. And the shepherd says, no. Where the issue is, is not in the pasture. Is in your following me. Now when I start leading you. You're going to go through places. Where there is no pasture. But you are going to trust me. That I know where I am taking you to. That right now. I might not see any pasture. But all I need to do. Is to follow him. Because I I have been praying and said, Lord, bring my pasture. But he's saying, no, you are praying the wrong prayers. What you should be praying is, Father, help me to follow you. Because as I follow you, it is natural. I keep on the support. As I follow you, I keep on the support. I will find my pasture. If that's resonated in your spirit, can you turn that in louder? Amen. Lift up your right hand. Say, My Father, my Father, help me to follow you. My Father, my Father, I want to follow you all the days of my life. I want to follow you with my whole heart. If you believe it, turn that in louder. Amen. Take your seat. So, sir. Understand the next time you're saying the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You are not exactly fixing the prayer in your pasture. You are praying and say, God, please help me to follow you. So, sir, it will be wrong if the shepherd is leading the sheep and the sheep gets to a rocky area and begins to abuse the shepherd. Why are you taking me through here? Don't you know I need pasture? But the sheep has to trust the shepherd that he knows where the pasture is. So, it is not the end of the road when I'm seeing a rocky ground. But I believe in my shepherd that he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards me. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to give me a future and an expected the Bible called it expected end. So, sir, it is in the leadership. It's not in the pasture. So there are believers who are going to kneel down from today till tomorrow praying for pasture and they will never find it. But God seems to be saying to them, you don't know where the answer is. It's in following. It's in the three-day fasting. I asked you to follow. It is in the forgiveness I asked you to forgive. It is in the season when I asked you remain here. And yet you want to go. It is in your following me. It is me telling you let that habit go. And you listen to me. It is in your following. That is where you are going to find pasture. Am I communicating? So do not think it is in me carrying the pasture and delivering it to you. It is in your following me so that I can lead you to where your pasture is. 
Am I communicating? So, if this means anything to you, this is the time to look back and ask God, so who is the problem? It's not you. You know where my pasture is. It's just that I followed. It was a season that I was going through a rocky area. And I just turned my back. And I wonder, where are you taking me to? But he keeps saying to me, but you're talking to me. You've been praying, you've been talking to me. I'm taking you through this. Because this is the way to get to your pasture. Am I communicating? Lift up your right hand. Thunder, I am in my rest. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But that's not where he stops. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pasture. You need to get there. Somebody shout again say, I'm in my rest. I said it to you before. But let me say it again and then take you to where I want to take you to now. Now, the shepherd gives the sheep pasture, green pasture. However, the psalmist now takes the experience to a new level. By when I am done eating, there's a mentality you give me. Never think that this was just the Bible's way of describing where the sheep is lying on. No, sir. It is God's way of reminding the sheep, even though it gives you food, even though you ate from it, you are still higher than it. So let your mentality be. Don't let what I have given you become what you are worshipping. Still carry the mentality that I am bigger than this thing. So sad. It will affect the way you even call it. You will not see it as something that I can never get. So you do not just take me to pasture. You position me in a way that shows that the pasture is under me. Am I communicating? Help me look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor what you are looking for. By dominion mandate. Is already under you. I need you to say it again. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. What you are asking for. By the dominion mandate. Is already under you. Now tell your neighbor. Call it forth. Tell your neighbor it will obey you now. Tell your neighbor. I am saying call it forth. Tell your neighbor it will obey you now. Tell your neighbor, can we try it? Tell your neighbor, let's go. In 30 seconds, call that thing you're looking for. Open your mouth, call it forth, call it forth. It's under you, call it forth. Let your amen turn the louder. Lift up your right hand. Say he's already under me. Scream it louder. Say he's already under me. Say he's already under me. Say I will not labor for it. Say but I will get it. Say I will not suffer for it. Say but I will get it. Say I am positioned on top of what I am looking for. Say all I need to do is to stretch forth my hands and grab it as many as I want. Lift up your hand and say today I announce he has given me everything that I Tends to life uh, and godliness. Uh, if you understand it, shout a loud amen. Take your seat for one second. Let me look at your neighbor. Say it's under you. That neighbor needs to hear it again. Say to your neighbor, it's not far from you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor it's under you. Tell your neighbor, say, look well. Grab it. Say, pasture. You are lying on it. Say, and it's what you need. Tell your neighbor, look well. Say, grab it. Say grab it. Say grab it. If you understand the thunder in louder, amen. And interestingly, he continues again and says, He leaded me beside the still waters. Kai. People of God, I'm sure you do know, but for emphasis, let me explain again. Especially during the Bible times in the Oriental culture. People of God, the brand of sheep that they read then had a lot of wool in its body am i communicating 
He had a lot of wool in its body. And so, what the shepherd does is that if this sheep gets into water, because of the woolly nature of the sheep, the water is going to be, the sheep is going to be drenched in so much water that the sheep is now going to feel heavy, too heavy, that movement will become a problem. So what the shepherd does is that he doesn't lead the sheep into the water. He leads the sheep beside the water. The idea behind it is that I want to give you something, but you are not going to mingle with what I'm giving you. The idea behind it is I'm going to take you into the marketplace and I'm going to give you your due. However, you will not mingle into the debt so that it doesn't slow you down. I'm going to bring you people that are not exactly godly as helpers. But you will not mingle with their sister because by your nature, if you mingle with them, they will slow you down. So he doesn't take me into the water. People of God, everybody that will be useful to you is not carrying a Bible. I'm afraid to announce it to you. Everybody God will use to move you to your next season. I'm afraid they are not God lovers. So God is going to take you to where they are. However, understand he will take you beside the still waters. So you just took your mouth, drink. If you decide to jump in, now you do yourself. Am I, am I communicating? Kabando subaladia. So you're going to meet people. As you begin to become a high player in your industry, you're going to meet people. They are not exactly good. You're not going to say you're not godly. I'm not going to do business with you. You will end up a poor man. You're going to meet people. And all you need to do is God. Give me the wisdom. Give me the knowledge. How do I navigate this? Kebando Sukuta. They have what I need. But I don't need who they are. Did you hear what I just said right now? And so people of God, it's going to be because some of them will want to get you involved in their lifestyle. And they say to you, can we discuss at the club? Meet me up at the club by 10 p.m. And you say, God, this is not part of the package. Kabada, I have business here. Lord, would you help me when they begin to make offers that will contradict my faith for me to still be in the place where I will drink from this still water without me jumping in the still water and me myself getting slowed down or possibly getting drenched because the sheep cannot swim. So sir, when the sheep becomes loaded with water, all it does is just a sink. You are not like them. Don't play like them. Otherwise, you will sink. Lord, teach me to know when the water is not to be jumped into. But it's just to stand beside the still water. Because I prayed for this. I will not get there and disappoint you. I begged you to open this door. Now that you've opened it and I've gone there. I'm throwing away everything that has to do with you. Because I want to drink. No sir. I'm going to walk beside the still water. Am I, am I talking to someone? Lift up your right hand, thunder, I am in my rest. Please, am I blessing someone this morning? Somebody thunder again, say, I am in my rest. Can you shout it louder again, say, I am in my rest. So, sir, this is no way he stops. He says, now, one thing he does is that he restores my soul. He's given me pasture. He's led me beside the still waters. But then he says there's another thing. I don't want to fix the situation and not fix you. Because you will damage what I have brought. So sir, I wish above all things, Apostle Paul said, that thou mayest prosper and be in good health 
even as thy soul prospereth. So you're not interested in just having me prosper in things. You want my soul to prosper. And so this is why you take your time to restore my soul. You are fixing my soul. People of God, this is, you fix my mind. You fix me. You fix my mind. Because there are different kinds of mind. There's one that is called a reprobate mind. People of God, this is a debased mind. There is one the Bible called a doubtful mind. Am I communicating? But however, there are ones that the Bible calls the renewed mind. Did I forget to speak to you about the carnal mind? People of God, that one that perceived nothing from God. But sir, when you restore my soul, being the Akasha, this mind is renewed. Am I communicating? This is what you do. Because you know what pattern desire. Adekota, this soul has been hit with a lot of things. And when it begins to receive blessings, it can mismanage what God is bringing. When it needs a helper, he might think that the helper has become a boyfriend. People of God, when you need, so Lord, I can, I can make mistakes. I can make mistakes. So restore my soul. Let me know what to do in my season so that I don't lose it. Am I communicating? And this is the only way I can live a righteous life. If you can fix my soul, that is where he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Am I communicating? I wish I can stay here. But there are people the Lord is saying this morning, listen, it's been a long time coming I've been wanting to fix your soul. And you know you're not close to God. And you're saying, Lord, Pastor, I, I want to walk in this part of righteousness. Listen, any day you come here and this man of God standing here begins to de-emphasize on righteousness and a walk with God. Please pick up your Bible and walk away because this house has become house of demons. But people of God, righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people of God. There is no, we are not, there, there are no middle ways about it. People of God, I understand that it's a journey, it's a walk with God. But people of God, I understand there are seasons you will fail and rise. But you got to know Jesus. You got to know Him. You have to know Him. There are no two ways about it. People of God, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And so I don't know that just a sprinkle of you here and just who are saying, Pastor Jerry, I want to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Now, I want to give you this one minute before I continue. You can actually say this prayer wherever you are. And if just in case you have known God and you've backslidden from the faith, you can actually be restored to him right now. Now, you can say this prayer after me. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come and be my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me my sins cleanse me, sanctify me and make me pure and whole again. Amen. If you said a prayer, you are now born again. Church, can we celebrate our Jesus? Interesting as it may seem, the psalmist did not stop there. He says, I'm, I'm trying to run. He said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, understand carefully. Now, if you've heard me preach from this scripture, there's a place you're expecting, what you're expecting me to say here. But I, that's not where I'm going to today. The psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. Which means, don't forget, he's leading me. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He's taking me again to where it's, it's about him. Right? And then, he also leadeth me beside the still one. So, he's always leading me. He's always leading me. I'm always moving. I'm then he says something shocking. Yet though I walk. At this point, I can't find the leader here. Since this scripture started, he's been the one leading. He's been the one leading. But I'm looking at verse 4 and I'm saying, I'm, I'm seeing the psalmist not say, he leaded me through the valley of the shadow of death. Anyway, pack that one by the corner of your mind. God cannot be tempted with evil. So put that in there. So the psalmist says, I'm the one walking through 
the value of the shadow of death. But look at the excitement for me. The psalmist say he's not here. But when I had an encounter with him, all he did was just to move. He kept leading me. The Lord is my shepherd. He leaded me beside the still waters. He, so it's just been about move, about move. So when I can't feel him, when I can't sense him, I will remember what he taught me. And that is why no matter where you find yourself, move. No matter, don't let a situation tie you down. There are days when you can't, God, where are you? And you're saying, God, are you in this? Make yourself a promise that no matter what happens, Jerry will keep moving. Don't let situation stampede your faith. Keep moving. Lord, when I look left and I look right, and I'm like, God, I feel alone here. But there's one thing I will always do. Move. Lord, I feel like everyone has left me to myself. One thing you must remind yourself is I must keep moving. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Call your name like an audacious prophet. Call your name and say, Jerry. Can you call your name and say it again? Say, Jerry. Say, keep moving. There are seasons when you'll be alone, but keep moving. The seasons when it looks like you're the only one that is doing what you're doing, keep moving. The seasons when you don't even understand what is going on, keep moving. The seasons when you weigh all your prayers and look at the answer and wonder, why are others receiving and I am not receiving? Keep moving. There are seasons when you begin to ask, you have more questions than answers. Keep moving. People of God, he's always there. And he says, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If you ever find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, please don't miss the lesson of the rod and the staff. The staff is what the shepherd uses to beat the sheep into sheep. You understand what I mean? You know, just, you know, no, 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 don't go there, don't go there. Come back, come back. You know, kai menini, like, you know. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I know, did I say that right? Uh -huh. So, and then he will. That's what he uses. But he uses the rod to ward off predators. You would have mismanaged your valley season if you did not understand the place of the rod and the staff. So, if you've ever found yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, number one, the rod against the predator, which is warfare. Number two is the staff that he uses to put me in shape, correct me. Number two is what am I learning? What does he want me to learn in this thing? That is for me, it's character. What are you doing in my character? These are things that will give you rest. So no longer will you come to the valley of the shadow of death and, and then you say, God, where am I? No, no. He won't. If, I, if it looks like a valley of the shadow of death, then there's a rod part of it. I'm going to pick up my rod. Who is responsible for this? I'm going to appear, 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 and go, go. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you ever find yourself, appear, cashier, everybody. We know they grieve for anybody. Not to think of demonic carry your rod. Are you, are, you, are you getting what I'm saying? As in, you, if you find, you know the problem is that you go to the valley of the shadow and then, God, why am I here? And the Lord said, now I've handed over all power to you. While I was there, I was the one, David's revelation is that I was the one doing the, now collect the rod. Collect the rod. Go and ask who poured the libation. Ask, where is the pattern and cycle repeating from? Take your rod. Somebody help me thunder fire. But most importantly, also look at the staff and say, Lord, what, what am I learning? What are you teaching me? Who am I becoming? What do you want to mold me to become? 
It is important. People of God, listen to this. He said, thou preparest a table before me. I'm running now. In the presence of my enemy, thou anointest my head with oil. I've often said it. My cup runneth over. The reason for the table is so that I can eat, so that he can pour oil. People of God, there are too many people who have not eaten that are looking for oil. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. You have to be capacitated. Do you understand? So that you can carry the oil. People of God, don't desire a, an oil you don't have capacity for. So the first thing I do for you is that I lay the table and I ask you to do what? Eat. So sir, every time you are beginning to eat, 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 eat of his fellowship, eat of communion, eat of his word, it means that an oil, that's an anointing for a greater high. So he's not wasting your time. He's preparing you for oil. Am I communicating? People of God, he anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. So sir, he walks on my head. It reflects on my cup. If you ever find your cup going below expectation, something is wrong with your head. Can I say it again? If your cup is at the barest minimum, Lord, something is my, it's very simple. Something is happening to the way I see things. What am I hearing? Lord, what am I processing? What's going on in my head? Lord, my cup is not full. God, it is not about the cup. Stop praying, God, fill my cup, fill my cup. Because even if that cup is full, this head will still cause the cup to go dry. Walk on my head and my cup will never be empty. Did you hear what I just said? I wish I had the time. But it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A typical shepherd goes in front of the sheep and the sheep follows after the shepherd. Make no mistakes. My back is not empty. He says, the shepherd is in front, the sheep is following. Then after the sheep, there is goodness and mercy. No thing say, because I no get eye for back, that my back day empty. Turn small. You go find and say, waiting day my back. Now goodness and mercy. Did he bless you this morning? Would you rise on your feet wherever you are? Were you blessed this morning? Can you turn the glory? Raise your right hand and thunder. I am in my rest. I am in my rest. If you love the Lord like I do, let your amen thunder seven times. Would you put together your offerings, your tithe, and your partnership? Put together your offerings. In streams of joy, we stand to give to God because we're offering to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God is good. What a privilege to serve Him. People of God, with all the prayers made today and you know the battles are over, you're going to make it a seed. I'm encouraging you this morning, don't give an offering. Don't give an offering. Put a seed together. Put together your tithes and your partnership. But most importantly, Say, God, I trust this service. I trust your power in this service. Can you raise your offerings, your seed, your tithe, your partnership? By all means, don't do what you always do because there's a power here to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Wave it. Wave it. Wave it. Let the blessings of those who have honored God with their seeds their tithes and their partnership be your portion. The devil rise rebuke for your sake. And windows of heaven are open and there's no room enough to contain. It is done. Let your amen thunder louder.